We finished chapter 11 with a brief discussion of alkene metathesis, which is also known as olefin metathesis, and then a slide at the end on alkyne metathesis. And these reactions are effectively just taking two alkenes and swapping the partners that are involved in the alkenes themselves, right? Notice in this situation, we've got one of the carbons involved in the alkene in yellow, another one highlighted in purple, okay? and notice that they end up being swapped. Okay? And we do that by breaking the double bond and then rejoining the fragments with an organometallic catalyst. Okay? And when we do this, break the bonds and put the fragments together, there's two possibilities. In the top root, right, this is the whole point of the metathesis to get new products. Right? This is what we're hoping to achieve. In the bottom reaction down here, we break bonds, swap partners, but then we actually end up getting the same product. Make sure you're thinking about these things in 3D. But that's fine, right? We haven't hurt our yield because we can then put these right back into the pot and do the reaction again. Yeah? So it's a game of chance, but keep in mind we're always forming a double bond between two sp2 carbons and at the end of the day we want to put that bond between two carbons that weren't previously joined together. Okay. The best way to do alkene metathesis is with using terminal alkenes where they're at the end of the molecule because then one of the products that's produced right is ethene which is a gas over here so you can remove that ethene gas and Le Chatelier's principle tells us that reaction will be driven forward in favor of this reaction. So how does it get done? As I mentioned before, with a catalyst. Okay. For alkene metathesis, we use something that's known as a Grubbs catalyst, okay, which contains ruthenium, hence its role in the organometallic chapter. Uh, notice the general ligands over here. There are a couple different generations of the Grubbs catalyst, changing the ligands to control its reactivity and improve it overall but you should be familiar with the fact that Grubbs catalysts contain ruthenium. Okay. And the reason for the, using the Grubbs catalyst for alkene metathesis is the fact that it's pretty tolerant. It will effectively react with a lot of our molecules without interrupting any of the other functional groups that are present. Okay. One other thing to keep in mind before we go into the mechanism for this thing, uh, if we are doing alkene metathesis with a Grubbs catalyst. It will form both the E and the Z isomers. We're thinking about it differently, cis and trans, of your new alkene. Okay, so you will form both. It's not stereoselective. And you can also use two different alkenes. Okay, we don't just have to use one thing and do metathesis. Okay, two different alkenes, right? Swap partners, yellow and purple again, get a new product can also use alkene metathesis to close a ring. Okay? Again, ethene gas produced over here, and we've closed the ring. Okay? And it's possible, really, this alkene metathesis with any combination of alkenes that you want to put in. The challenge with these syntheses most of the time is separating the products out. So you don't want to get kind of too crazy with what you're doing. So now let's get to the mechanism. It's a two-phase synthesis. Okay. So we're going to look first at phase one, which is where the metal inserts itself into the double bond. Okay. Contains two metal-containing intermediates. We've replaced those carbons that were involved in the double bond. Each one of them gets replaced with a metal to make those intermediates one and two. All right, so put it right in place for carbon. How does that happen? Okay. Showing the Grubbs catalyst, right? This guy up here. We start by doing a two plus two cycloaddition, okay, which we would have learned in chapter eight. We've seen those cycloadditions a couple of times. Okay. And that gives us two different intermediates here, two different metallocyclobutane intermediates here, depending on where that metal in the R group are. Okay. And then we have a ring opening reaction to form two new intermediates, okay, one and two. Then those intermediates in phase two react with the starting material, again via a two plus two cycloaddition. 
All right, remember cyclo addition because it's cyclic, two members, two members, hence two plus two. So it's effectively the same mechanism, right? It's a two plus two cyclo addition. And then just like we saw, right, cyclo addition and then, sorry, cyclo addition and then the ring opening reaction, cyclo addition, ring opening reaction, same mechanism, do it twice. And then we produce two new intermediates, right? Intermediate one formed intermediate two, intermediate two formed intermediate one, which is something with alkene metathesis. You'll always see that. And then we form our new alkenes. Keeping in mind one of those ideally would be ethene gas so we can get rid of it. Simple mechanism, make sure you're familiar with that for alkene metathesis. As I mentioned at the beginning, we finish with alkyne metathesis. We won't cover the mechanism for this one, but do know the name for the catalyst you use for alkyne metathesis. Same idea, swapping partners. And when we're doing alkyne metathesis, we use what's known as the Schrock catalyst. That does not contain ruthenium. Schrock catalysts use molybdenum or tungsten. Really powerful reaction, a lot of synthetic utility. Both Grubbs and Schrock won Nobel Prizes in the early 2000s for their work. Okay. That concludes chapter 11. Make sure you're familiar with all the different named reactions and catalysts that we discussed in this chapter.